Hello guys and welcome back. In this video we're gonna keep our journey talking about PCG and in this video we're gonna work with blend, landscape blend materials and PCG to create masks throughout our level. Those concepts together can be really helpful in the environment creation to achieve better results and as always, if you like uh, the channel content, don't forget to subscribe and like the videos. Also, if you want to learn more about, about materials, I just released a course about materials inside the Unreal Engine. Just check it out in the description. So, let's get started. Uh, we are here in the exact same file that we created in the first video about PCG that I made in the last week. And in that video, create a forest system and that you can control the density of the forest, the scale and the rotation of each tree and each component so you have a few rocks as well. Also the system is interacting with the water system uh, which means that uh, whenever we create anything with the water system, a lake, uh, other lakes or sea or anything like that, uh, the the trees won't be inside of the water, so we can can do that. So if I go here and I change the size of the the lake, as you can see, the forest uh, adapts to to the shape of the the lake. So that is what we did in the last video, and in this video we're gonna create another uh, material. Uh, to our landscape that this might really be a path so we're gonna create a path uh, throughout our forest and the idea is that uh, we're gonna paint our path and it, this path is going to delete all the trees to don't have any trees in our path uh, at the same time that we can explore other things in our path like different shapes of rocks maybe some kind of weeds or stuff like that so that's the objective of the video so let's get started uh, to start we need to create really quick a new material so we're gonna go in the forest floor which is our material that we create the grass in the last video and i'm gonna create another set of textures to create our material to be our pathway i need to do uh, a small refactor over here so here i need to change from forest floor i need to use material attributes so here and here i need to search for the materials that i download from Kixel bridge so here i have the this rocky forest and we have the, the textures uh, here. Uh, by the way guys if you feel lost about what I'm doing here I have other videos that explain that in more details and so yeah so here I have the set material attributes so I need to create this node set material attributes over here and this set material attributes I need to create uh, the base color, roughness, and the normal. So here will be our base color, our normal. And you can use the, the alpha channel of the base colors to be our roughness. It's exactly the same thing as we use the, the ORD map. I'm gonna do that just because it's a little bit faster. Here you need to delete. And I need to change the the simple sorcerer, no, not the simple, the MIP value mode to derivative in both of the textures. So I get that. That uh, I'm doing this just to break the the UV, uh, just because to just to be harder to export any tiny repetition. Since it's a landscape, it usually is a really big texture, so it's easy to spot any repetition. So I'm doing, I'm breaking the UV to avoid that. So here, and then I need to use another set material attributes. I almost there, guys. Okay, and then I need to use a blend, a landscape layer blend. So the landscape layer blend, it's a node to create uh, different layers of uh, landscape materials. So here we can create rocks, grass, uh, mud, sand, wherever you like. 
and we're gonna create layers, different layers inside of our landscape. And doing that, we can uh, paint different uh, textures and materials in our landscape. So that's what uh, we want to achieve. So here to do that, I need to create a few layers. So the first layer will be the grass. Nice. So in the other one will be our path. I'm gonna plug both over here and then I'm gonna go and plug in the first floor. And then I'm gonna hit apply. Probably it might take a while to compile everything. I'm gonna go here. Oh, that was quick. So I'm gonna change from selection mode to landscape mode. And as you can see, uh, if you go here and paint, now we have two layers. The two layers that we create here in our material. And now if I go here and select the path, I'm gonna have a brush. And if I use my path, uh, as you can see, you can paint a path. So yeah, now let's let's solve. Uh, now let's show you the the problem that we created doing that. Because now if I open our PCG graph. Uh, we start this PCG graph in the last video. So if you want to know how those things work uh, in this, the, the previous video, I'm going gonna, gonna to show you the more details. And now uh, I'm going to show you uh, what's the problem that we create doing the path. So if I go here in the surface sampler and I increase the density just a little bit, uh, as you can see that we have trees in our path and, and it would be a cool thing just like because we're doing PCG if you anytime that we paint, paint any path uh, automatically the, the trees disappear and you can spawn other kind of meshes in the path and we're gonna solve this problem right now so here you have our our graph it's pretty simple right now but if you haven't seen anything like that it would be a little bit overwhelming but basically you are I'm gonna delete this connection I'm gonna delete this connection and I'm gonna go here and spawn points so basically here you are spawn spawning all the points and as you can see uh, because you are interacting with the, the water system, there is no spawning points in the water. This is spawning points, each, each of these points will be a tree or a, or a rock or anything that I want that I create in our static mesh spawner. And what we need to do here is take out all these spawn points where from where we have the path. And to do that, uh, it's simple. We need to go here in the surface sampler and then let's search for filter, attribute filter. How does this node work? So I'm gonna go here inside of our filter. So the target the target attribute you can call I'm gonna call the grass. Uh, how can how can you understand grass? Uh, because here you have the get landscape data, right? So here you are you are gathering all the data from the landscape, and the landscape has these two layers. And one of these layers is called grass. So if I go here in the attribute filter and the target attribute will be grass, uh, this attribute you understand that you are getting this data over here in the layer. So that's why it's working. And here we need to change the threshold uh, attribute for density. And now what I'm telling to the, the PCG. So, well, you have the surface sampler. You know the surface sampler? Okay, so I have a filter. So I want, in this filter, I'm filtering everything that has the grass material. And inside of this filter, this filter will be the difference instead of directly the surface sampler. If I do that, 
as you can see there is no spawning points in the bank in the the path anymore and if i create the other path in a force region as you can see there is no any spawn points in the in the path anymore and with with that we solve the problem of the trees in our path as you can see there is no trees anymore in our path and anything any any time that we paint the path we just need to go here in forest reaching and then you have our path without any trees and the other thing that we can do that would be really cool it's uh, we can use this output over here which is outside of the filter so this it's another output that is saying okay so inside of the filter you want to be the difference uh, use this as a difference and spoil the trees but outside of the filter it will be our path because it's we have just two materials so far so if it's not a grass it'll be a path so i'm gonna go here and i can create another surface sampler uh, and the surface sampler needs data from the the landscape otherwise it won't work so i'm gonna go here and now as you can see you have points so now you are spawning all the points but just in the path that's exactly what we want and here i'm gonna use the other node that's often used in pcg which is the transform points to control a little bit the to control a little bit the, the transform of these points so if i go here and change so now we have some random rotation, which is good. And also we need to can pick the scale, min, maximum two. And then you have maybe a bit too big, but uh, let's spawn a few things to see how it works. And here in the transformation point, I need to use another node called static mesh spawner. It is exactly the same that we spawn the trees. So a static mesh spawner here and here we need to can go in the mesh entries and add a few entries so in the first one would be in the description let's search i download a few rocks a new elements so i'm gonna go here what i'm doing yeah here Entries. Now we have description. Rock. We have this. Maybe let's add another one. That could be a wheat. That cotton. Cotton tree. Cotton grass. Search for like a smaller one, maybe. Let's try out this one. Now let's see if you have something. Maybe it's too small. Yeah, definitely it's too small. Actually, we're missing the scale over here. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna increase I'm gonna increase the scale of the things a little bit. And just because this path is really wide, we just lost a little bit the, the scale. So if you go here and mm, scale, I'm gonna it's like in maybe scale max 15 or something. Maybe that's too big, but 10. Yeah, maybe this way sounds good. So now you can see that we have a few cotton plants and some rocks in our path. And you can put everything that you want in your path or even nothing if you want. And in this way, you have our path that you can create, you have our forest and you have our water system. So that's it for this video guys thank you for watching 
and probably are gonna create more PCG content in the future. And stay tuned. See you soon. Bye bye.